Hello colleagues, uh, let's start again from the basics. And what are those basics? Uh, how to start up with the system, debug with the system, uh, what are the typical mistakes that people do and how to avoid them, what are the solutions. Um, general basic recommendations. Uh, when you build a system, of course, study the placement manual, operating manual and follow those. Uh, but if you don't and you want to, you know, from the scratch, so the recommendation is simple, build the most simple uh, 2D configuration. So 2D configuration means that you take uh, two beacons, two stationary beacons, uh, place them on the wall. Place on the wall like this, like we recommend in their operating manual with whatever, five, six meters between them. Ideally, they must be placed like this, slightly like this. And uh, in front of me, there will be area where my mobile beacon will be moving. Why like this? Uh, because uh, the diagram, the sensitivity diagram of their uh, microphone is in front and to, to the side it doesn't hear pretty well. So it means that when you place like this uh, it will listen to each other uh, but maybe it's not optimal so we, this is why we suggest you know to put them slightly like this so slightly like you know facing each other and uh, the beacon must face the area where you will be uh, getting your mobile beacon tracked. So that's the first one. And once again, 2D, one mobile beacon and uh, non-inverse architecture. Why non-inverse architecture? Because in non-inverse architecture, the mobile beacon is emitting and the station beacons are receiving. And uh, whatever frequency you choose the mobile beacon, you cannot make a mistake. In uh, inverse architecture, you can make a mistake because uh, for example, there is, a, there is a frequency written on the beacon and uh, I will talk about this a bit later but some people do the mistake uh, by forcing the mobile beacon in inverse architecture to work on their non-native frequency. So for example, I have a beacon 37 kilohertz in front of me but uh, some guys are uh, you know, just setting 31 kilohertz. It will not work. Never set their ultrasonic frequency uh, for transmission different than the native frequency that is written in the white label. It will simply not work. Uh, for the reception, it can get any frequency because if you're talking about super beacons. Uh, for beacons hardware version 4.9, which are older and mature beacons, uh, you don't have any freedom. So, station, uh, so transmission frequency and receiving frequency must be the same as and written here but for the super beacons the receiving frequency can be any and the system choose automatically and the transmission frequency only as written here <coughs> but once again when you start build 2d uh, map consisting of a single sub map consisting of one single mobile beacon and non-inverse architecture which is the simplest configuration you can get which gives you the least chances of making mistakes the next is, uh, of course, this is the simplest, simplest configuration. It's not what you wanted to have. Uh, build and increase the complexity one time, uh, one step at a time. Uh, we made already those recommendations multiple, multiple times, but people keep uh, making mistakes. This is why we are shooting this video once again. So one step at a time. What does it mean? Uh, for example, you have uh, non-inverse architecture. Another step would be to move from non-inverse architecture to inverse. You don't change anything. You don't increase the number of beacons. You don't increase the number of uh, mobile beacons. You don't change anything. You take the same beacons. Hopefully they were on different frequencies. Otherwise you, we would have to replace the beacons. Uh, and update the software from non-inverse architecture to inverse architecture and test in exactly the same setup after you get uh, their uh, perfect uh, non-inverse architecture tracking. You update the software to inverse architecture on station beacons, on the mobile beacon, and uh, you see their perfect tracking in inverse architecture. Everything else is the same, so you just changed from non-inverse to inverse. That is one step. Then, as soon as you reach that, you can do the next step. It could be, for example, introducing another mobile beacon. So you had one, now you introduce another one, and they, uh, you know, run two or more. 
um, that would be the second layer, the second step. <coughs> or instead of this, you say, no, 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 I don't need the second mobile beacon, I want a uh, wider area. In this case, you introduce the second sub-map, still all, all, all the same. Non-inverse architecture, for example, you were in non-inverse architecture, you build one sub-map, and then you move, instead of inverse architecture, you move to the second sub-map. So you build the second sub-map, but everything else is the same. One single beacon, and uh, still non-inverse architecture. You introduce the second sub-map, uh, you do and build it like the first one, separately from your uh, first sub-map, make sure that in the second sub-map the tracking is perfect, then you follow our uh, recommendation about the service zones, handover zones, and everything else, and then you freeze, and you then you have the map. But point is, don't try to jump over the steps. Don't try to build, you know, the final um, configuration that you wanted. You will, but do it in steps, in small steps, single step at a time. Uh, if you're still stuck, then, you know, basic recommendation is still the same. Disassemble, return to the previous point where you were successful, and then start from there. Do this minor step at a time, and then you will be able, you know, to succeed and debug and say, okay, well, I moved this, it didn't work. Then it will be much, much, much easier for you to understand what exactly was wrong. Either the frequency was, or non line of sight, or there are many things that could be wrong. And if you jump over the steps, obviously it's more difficult for, for you to see where exactly the problem was. Uh, this is an example on the drone. The drone is probably the most complex one, because it's in 3D, because it's autonomous, uh, but the logic is the same. I will be uh, explaining based on the drone, but it's the same for, let's say, for autonomous robot. Okay, when you start, I want to fly uh, autonomous drone or multiple autonomous drones, just another layer of complexity, e in non-universe architecture using uh, the paired beacons and using the mission planner. You still start with the same. You build basic 2D um, map consisting of a single sub-map with a single mobile beacon. It doesn't matter that later you will increase, increase, increase. You start with the same. You build it. You know, you achieve perfect tracking, no jumps, you know, everything is ideal, great. Then, you still don't touch the drone. Drone is there, you know, let it charge, etc. You build the same, but in 3D. So you add additionally two beacons, now you have four beacons in the map. You repeat. You remember to set the heights, you remember that when you freeze the uh, table of distance must be white. All those basics which are described and highlighted in the operating manual you follow, but from 2D to 3D. Then you put this on the drone, but drone is still inactive. You simply, you know, connect the mobile beacon to the drone or the mobile beacon on the drone and you just grab the drone and uh, repeat the same tracking. What do you add? You add that uh, the power of the drone is there. Telemetry is probably active or something like this. You don't fly the drone yet, not yet, but you already increase the complexity because it's on the drone and there may be something, you know, distracting, obstructing, uh, disturbing in one way or another. You detect uh, and confirm that there is no distraction and the tracking is still the same. Fine. Then you can go further. What is further? You activate manually uh, their propellers. They start to produce noise. The same with the robot. So you have, for example, our Marl Mind robot. Uh, you do the same. So before you really, you know, drive the robot autonomously, you do this basic tracking 2D. Then, for example, you don't need 3D tracking for the robot. Uh, you jump over the step. You activate the beacon on the robot, not just the mobile beacon, but on the robot, and drive the robot. Not even drive the robot, but move the robot around. Works fine. Then you drive the robot manually, left, right, uh, turn. Still works. Okay, then you are ready to the next step. Uh, what is the next step? You remotely control. Now the drone is flying remotely, like, you know, remotely controlled plane, uh, remotely controlled drone, not yet autonomous, or you drive the robot around. Still in absolutely manual mode, and you check that tracking is still good with, uh, uh, with everything active. And after that, uh, you are ready to do something autonomous. In case of mission planner, 
uh, autopilot, uh, you go there and uh, you start building the map and start, you know, putting the waypoints and try to fly it autonomously. Or in case of our robots, uh, you do the path uh, in the dashboard and send it at this stage. Uh, you may still have not paired beacons, but a single beacon. Uh, for the robot, since it has two beacons, and for the drones to fly autonomously, we usually command two mobile beacons on the drone. Uh, so you make sure that both are uh, uh, tracked simultaneously, not yet in the paired mode, but in the single mode uh, well. Because you cannot have a paired beacon working well if single beacons do not uh, track uh, perfectly. So when you achieve the single uh, tracking for each of them separately, only then you uh, pair them. Because otherwise, if this is tracking, tracked well, if this is not, they will be you know, jumping, since it cannot jump because they are paired, and there is a fixed, according to their system, fixed distance between them, then it would uh, you know, behave like this, you know, like, like it's turning, which is not. In fact, it's this tracking is not perfect. And then you know which one is it. So this is why before you do the paired beacons, you track them uh, separately and uh, independently. So only, only after this, you are ready to fly autonomously uh, or drive autonomously. Now, the logic is simple, and I hope that you understand this. So key points, don't jump over the steps. Do uh, one step, the complexity increases the time. Uh, typical problems. Software, 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 software. Even though we keep repeating it multiple times, still uh, mistakes are the same. Make sure that the software is taken from the same software batch. Because when you produce, we produce maybe months before you get the beacons. Uh, after that, or modems, or whatever system. And after that, the software is updated. So it you, means that you may have their beacon with one software level, the modem is another software level, the dashboard is already in the third software level. No. Always, when you get their, the system, the first thing what you do, open, of course, operating manual, and do everything according to the operating manual. But the first thing in the operating manual is connect over the USB and upload the latest software for all network elements. All means all the beacons, mobile and stationary, the modem, and the dashboard. It must come from the same software pack. And the biggest, 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 biggest mistake is that uh, guys just take and run. No, no. I already explained why. They are produced in different uh, time uh, from different batches. So you need to update the software to have it from the same software package. Then, uh, during the testing, you could be testing, the uh, production could be testing. Their settings may be whatever, random, no, almost. So what you do, you really press the default button. So let's, let me uh, move to the dashboard. So for example, I have the beacon and this is the default button. This is the default button, press it, press it. Sometimes when I want to be super safe, I press the default, I reset, press default, something like this. But anyway, so I must press the default to upload the default settings. You see, if you mess up with the system heavily, and some people do, so it doesn't default everything. For example, uh, one of the uh, major mistake is this ultrasonic frequency. We, we even allow you to change it because we allow you a lot of things. Uh, but uh, you must not change their ultrasonic frequency from the native frequency uh, list on the board. So it meant that even default doesn't default to their right frequency because it cannot know what is right because we allow you to change it because it's, you know, a very, very versatile system. Even though if you do it, uh, even defaulting will not help you. So it means that you must make sure that the frequency which is set here, the ultrasonic frequency, is the same as on the label. Uh, then, next thing. Uh, beacons are not placed correctly. Now, there are many ways you can do it wrong. Uh, I don't know, starting from the fact that beacons are not facing like, like this. I don't know. This facing is front, and the mobile beacon is there, and you place it somewhere. 
to mild errors like uh, for example, these beacons are placed correctly, but this one is kind of a bit behind. Yeah, and if it's be a bit behind, then their, uh, their, uh, the microphone cannot hear it because it's, you know, it's in the shadow of its own body. So you cannot. This is why I said, ideally, you place them like this. So they are slightly turned to each other, so they hear the mobile beacon, but they hear each other as well. So this would be very, very ideal for 2D. So they are faced like this. So this would be also okay on the wall. Okay. Uh, until you have a very, very, you know, large distance, whatever, 30 meters between them. Then it could be, uh, but since we are talking about the starting up, we always suggest, you know, put them on, you know, good distances, like five meters, I don't know, 10 meters, no, close. Not, don't, don't go to the extremes right away. So uh, follow the operating manual. Oh, sorry, placement manual. There are many examples for 2D tracking, for 3D tracking, for precise Z tracking, for multiple, etc. But start with basic 2D. When you have basic 2D tracked, then everything else you would already, you know, know much better. So, table of distances is not wide. Uh, when you build the system, so this is, this is the table of distance. In table of distance, you must make sure that the distance uh, from, in my case, 13 to 11 and 11 to 13 is the same and the system is showing white it, uh, when it's fine. Then you can freeze the submap. If it's not white, you must not freeze the map because it's not ready. The system is reporting, oh, uh, there's a problem, you know, the distance doesn't match, there, there's something. Don't freeze the map when it's uh, not, not the correct distances, when the distances are mismatched uh, for sure there will be mistakes, so don't, don't do this mistake. It's a basic one, like all other basic mistakes, but still. So table of distances must be wide when you freeze it. Uh, another one, uh, you freeze the submap. Oh, sorry, okay, I, I freeze it. So you freeze the submap, but you don't freeze the map. You must freeze the map before the beacon will be uh, tracked. What happens when you freeze the map? When you freeze the map, uh, you see, I'm using currently the latest software which you don't have yet. It will be published in whatever, in a week. Uh, so we particularly address this point. So now in this new latest software, even without frozen map, the beacon will be kind of updated. Not with the right frequency, but at least it will be not dead. Uh, in their current software, and in general, our recommendation, you must freeze the map for what? Because when you freeze the map, the map is uploaded to the mobile beacon. Before the map is frozen, the beacon simply doesn't know anything about the map. The beacon is not able to, to be tracked. So this is why you must uh, freeze the map. And that's a very, very typical mistake that people freeze the submap, but forget freezing the map. So you must freeze the map. Uh, next, USB cables. Uh, we do have even, uh, you know, special photo and USB cables are indeed very different, like really different. Even though it's standard and universal, they are so different in mechanics and electrical properties and in quality, etc. So just don't assume anything. Even if you are saying that, okay, I used it, it, it must work. Okay, you can keep trying, uh, but our basic recommendation, you know, throw it away and connect another USB cable, maybe second, maybe third. They are really different, really different. And it's about the physical USB cable, but also USB port. For example, I had a laptop which from time to time lost all left USB ports, whatever, glitch in Windows, I don't know. <coughs> you can, of course, debug the Windows forever, uh, but since, you know, time is precious, Choose another port, choose another computer. Maybe in some extreme cases, uh, even jump from Windows to Linux. Maybe there is a very, very, very peculiar uh, combination of something. USB port plus Windows plus software version plus resolution. I don't know. But logic is the same. Don't try to you know, spend too much time. Just change the USB, change the cable, change the USB port if needed, change the laptop if needed change their beacons uh, or the modem if needed. I mean, just swap them and see what's going on. Uh, you will save a lot of time. Then the biggest issue of all is non-line of sight. Guys, our system is precise. 
precise means that uh, we are talking about you know centimeter level accuracy. Centimeter level, level accuracy things require line of sight. We have several videos about this. It's about physics. Of course, since we are using ultrasound, even my own body or even you know basic sheet of paper will be blocking the ultrasound completely. Uh, but we tested ultrawide band, which is supposed to go through the body. Yes and no, because my own body is different in properties than vacuum. So it means that when it goes through me, even if it goes through me, their electrical length is different than my length physical. Because, you know, I consist of water mostly and uh, permittivity of uh, my body is different from vacuum. So it means that the distance is not like this, but probably it's like this. So the result jumps, all kind of things, etc., etc. So to make the story short, line of sight, line of sight, line of sight. Line of sight between what and what? No, first of all, when you build the map, line of sight between the station beacons. So when you place the station beacons and there is on the wall, they can't see each other. What will happen? The signal will go, will reflect against the opposite wall, will come back, and it will think that, in fact, my neighboring beacon is not whatever, five meters away, but like uh, 15 meters away, like mirror. Uh, it's not a problem when there is line of sight, because we see this, and of course there is a reflection, but who cares? Our task is to detect the first signal, and we do, do detect it correctly, always correctly, when there is line of sight. When there is no line of sight, it, it's impossible in physically to measure, because, you know, what, what, what is this? How to measure the distance when there is no line of sight? So line of sight is required. Uh, take care, like really take care. Make sure, you know, even come to the beacon and see how it sees. Because you may be, you know, s uh, looking at the beacons from several meters and you may believe, okay, I see it. But when you approach, oh no, I cannot because antenna, its own antenna is blocking, you know. The microphone is tiny, like one millimeter, and your own antenna may be blocking. I already mentioned, so you may see that the beacon is like, in fact like this, turned like this. So it means that your own sensors are blocking their, the microphone. So all these small things, but when you make my, one small thing, another small thing, first they accumulate. Even a single one can completely destroy and then all the mistakes are coming. So if you follow the basics, everything works like from the scratch. If you don't, then you create a lot of mess. The system may try to recover. Uh, but it depends on the level of mistake. No heights are set. Particularly for 2D. Uh, for 3D and 2D, you always must provide the height for the station beacon because height is kind of relative. I'm sitting on the fifth floor. So against my floor, the height is whatever, 2 meters. But against the ground floor is whatever, 30 meters. But against what? I'm whatever on the mountain against their ocean level. It's whatever two kilometers. So it totally depends what is the height. So you must provide the height against your floor, because everything else will be also against this virtual floor. So provide the height, set it. Where I set it? Very very simple. You go once again to the dashboard. You choose the station beacon, and uh, this is the height, 1.9 meter in my case. Always for 2D. You must set the height not only for the station beacons, but also for the mobile beacon. So I set it to 1.4 meters because my station beacon, oh, my mobile beacon is somewhere there. So, uh, so this is not a typical mistake. Heights are not set. Uh, by default, we do have the zero. So the zero means that the heights are the same. Uh, so this is why it's not a capital mistake. If you don't set the height, it may work. It may have a you know, decent, uh, decent uh, tracking, but what will happen, it will have a shift. Because height error uh, uh, manifests itself in XY uh, error. But it's kind of fixed error. So it means that you, you are kind of tracking in this area, but since you didn't uh, set the height properly, it may be tracked like this. So tracking will be okay, but the absolute position will be not okay. Um, then, another thing. You see, we have a nose. This nose is basically saying, in my 2D map, I cannot you know, geometrically distinguish 
you know, it's a basic geometry. I cannot distinguish between position of the beacon at this point and at this point. Because how the system work? The system is measuring the distance from the mobile be beacon to the stationary and from this to this. Since this distance and this distance is the same, and this distance is the same, there are two points where these distances uh, satisfy. Uh, normally, you would need more than two beacons in order to resolve this issue in 2D. But since you want you to save on number of beacons you, you are buying, it's sufficient to use only two beacons for 2D. But you must specify in which hemi plane or semi plane you are using. And this is specified by this. So it means that this is why we recommend that you do place the beacons on the wall. When you physically place the beacons on the wall, like in my case, you cannot go through the wall. So you cannot make this mistake. So don't uh, place the beacon so that you, you, you can make those mistakes. No, just place them on the wall. It is, is the easiest. And then you would be able to, you know, run uh, the mobile beacon. And if I approach there, closer, closer, closer to the line connecting, then at some point of time, it will be reflecting and back. If I'm going through this, it will not go through. It will go like this. Oh, first of all, let me increase the number of uh, dots uh, times. Uh, so it will, if I go from this area to this area, it will go like this and then it will reflect because uh, we are basically setting and telling the system, look, it's only this uh, uh, semi-plane. Uh, don't, uh, don't try to position here. No, there's nothing. Uh, but uh, some people place them about beacons, you know, right in the middle of their warehouse and cross the line. And of course, there is a mistake. Mistake in placing the beacons and not paying attention uh, to this line connecting. So please do. Uh, microphone settings. This is a bit more complex. And our regular recommendation is usually, you know, press the default button. The microphone settings are here. So in this area, study. I will not show now because it would be, you know, just too much, but study. Particularly super beacons. Uh, with external microphones is rather complex, like Omni microphone. By default, there is only one. Uh, okay, this is RX. So uh, since we support up to four microphones, so this is a beacon. Uh, it has only one embedded microphone, so it must be RX1. Uh, but when you have additional uh, microphones, when you have, for example, Omni microphone. Omni microphone consists of four microphones in the paired configuration. So you switch them uh, here. In regular mode, I will not do this right now, but uh, regular mode, uh, paired, no, whatever. Study in the operating manual. So there are several settings. So uh, if you don't do this, then you, can, you may accidentally switch off your listening microphone. Or opposite, you may enable the microphone that do not exist, and it will listen to something, and there's no signal because you don't have the microphone. Or if you have Omni microphone, you may switch to single beacon and or single microphone, and Omni can hear from four directions, but it will hear only from one direction. And it's pretty difficult to spot because it's kind of listening, but not well, because it will be listening only from this direction and be deaf from these three directions. So it means that when the signal is coming like this, it will not hear, for Omni microphone will not hear, but it will hear, for example, a reflected signal. It will be a mess. The whole idea is make sure that you uh, have all their uh, microphones in the right position. The same <coughs> for their uh, transducers. There are five transducers. When you default, all five are enabled. Uh, but sometimes, uh, for example, you don't need five, and you just simply forget to enable them back. Why and when? Well, for example, I have my two mobile beacons, or two station beacons, and this is covering 90 degrees. This is covering 90 degrees. Uh, why do I need this in the up facing? No, I don't need it. Why do I need it? No, I don't need it. Left, right, I don't need it. And I may enable only this one. This would provide me the highest uh, accuracy, because it will be a small spot emitting. Not all five get averaging emitting, but it will be a small single dotted spot emitting. So that provides the highest accuracy uh, for tracking. But at the same time, remember that if you change and you forgot, then you place the beacons like this, then the, the map will be not built because this will be emitting, uh, but not emitting this one. And uh, if you place them like 
20 meters apart. Uh, this uh, transducer emits very, very poorly uh, in, in that direction. So it means that you must enable all their transducers in order to do. Sometimes all, sometimes only, uh, for example, if you place like beacon like this and if you want cover in front, then you disable this one, you disable this one. How to disable? No, like this. So I disabled, now I enabled. But make sure that you don't forget it. And if you have something messy, check it, check it. The same for this. So it means that there are settings for transducers, what I'm emitting, and settings for their uh, microphones. Make sure that the settings are right. Uh, what else? The map may be mirrored. Uh, also, you see, there is beacon number uh, 11 and beacon 13. It's very easy to mirror the map. Okay, map is frozen, it doesn't allow me to mirror, uh, but uh, let me make the mistake. You see, I mirrored the map. And now if I will try to freeze, it will show me differently. So uh, how, how do I know that uh, the map is mirrored? When it's uh, something, you know, strange going on. So I take the beacon and I move the beacon to 11, but in fact it's moving to 13 in my case and so forth. So make sure, uh, because you may have a perfect tracking, but it's kind of inverted. So in order to do this, this is, this is your button. Map mirror. And another one is this uh, map ceiling. Uh, it's also depending on uh, where the station beacons, because the station beacons may be above or below. You must not cross uh, this line as well, because uh, if you do, for example, for 3D tracking, for 2D it doesn't matter because it's irrelevant, you, you don't have a uh, you know, flexible Z, Z must be the same. But for 3D it does, and if you cross the plane connected, uh, I mean, with the beacons, so the system doesn't know, you, it needs the fifth beacon uh, in order to understand where, where, where is this. Uh, so it means that you may have increasing the height, and it would be decreasing the Z here, and vice versa. So use this button uh, for 3D. But since we are checking now the most basic, 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 so we assume that you are doing 2D, not yet 3D. But remember, these buttons, when, when you move the right direction, their position on, their, on the dashboard is moving to the wrong direction. Um, about the server zone, this is already one more layer more complex, because when you start building the maps, uh, you have only two uh, mobile beacons, for example, in in uh, in their in the sub map, and you freeze the map, and uh, there's always service zone, even if you don't specify, there's always. And we uh, set the 30 meters as a limit, 30 meters from where, the 30 meters from their station beacons to the mobile. So each of the station beacons do not listen more than 30 meters divided by speed of sound. And then they just stop. So they listen for 30 meters uh, distances and then they stop. So even though you don't see it, uh, but their kind of area would be something like this. Server zone would be like this. Uh, but if you build their uh, second sub map, okay, I will not explain how to build the second sub map. There we have uh, videos about this, but you have their, uh, you know, you create the second sub map. Then you populate the second submap with the station and beacons, you assign, etc. Et uh, but what will happen if you don't set the server zone? And uh, the submap, each of them is small, for example, five meters and another five meters. So what will happen? You will have huge overlapping areas and majority of area will be overlapping. So it means that, for example, in this point, this submap will try to position the beacon and this submap will try to sub submission, uh, position the beacon because it's still within their service zone, which is now 30 meters by default, which is wrong. This is why we say when you build multiple submaps and map consisting of multiple submaps, you must specify the server zone. Server zone is the area of responsibility of each of the submap. So in this case, this is your area of responsibility. And this is the second submap, and this is your area of responsibility. There must be a handover zone, 
where it's both, but it's relatively narrow and controlled, like one meter or two meters, depending on the speed of, uh, of your mobile objects. But if you don't do this, if you don't specify the service zone, then there are some maps are kind of fighting. Okay, I will define the position. No, I will define the position. The system will try to take the best information, but it's confusing the system because there are like too many opinions about the same position. Uh, so uh, avoid this. Avoid. It will try. In many cases, it will be doing pretty well. But this is already the wrong way uh, to, uh, you know, wrongly complicate the situation when it must be much simpler. So those are the basic mistakes. Try to avoid them. This uh, just highlights what people do, uh, but there are many more. But this is kind of typical, 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 typical. Uh, examples of very bad mistakes. Uh, oh, let, let me try to replicate them. The, the very bad mistake uh, was just, you know, accidentally discovered today. Tape their, uh, or attach uh, their station beacon to the wall with a tape. It's like, you know, I don't hear, I can't see. Uh, it's like this, because tape is not sound transparent. You completely block transmission and reception. So it means that the beacon is, you know, cannot shout, can ultrasound and cannot hear ultrasound at all. It may try because, you know, tape is not sealing completely, but it's a mess. It's a mess. Why? Because it will go from this and then it will reflect. So, and it can go uh, and can listen because the microphone is very, very sensitive. So it can hear like this from the opposite. But it's 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 bad. It's very very bad because most likely it will not per not work well. It will be something, and it will be very very complex to debug because you will see the tracking, but the tracking will be terrible, and it will be very difficult to see why exactly it's terrible. So we discovered this just by accident because you know the tape is not even seen well. So never 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 close this. This why it, it must be like this. This is a listening point. This is uh, transducing, they must not be abstracted at all. Not in the middle, not of course like this by the tape or by the box, because some people are pl placing the beacons on, uh, inside the box, plastic box, to protect ag against the moisture. No, no, of course you cannot and must not do this, because it will completely destroy the system. This is why we have their outdoor versions, and they have special membranes. This is uh, you know, protected by default with special membrane. So this is why we have outdoor versions. They are not for nothing. Uh, you must not close the beacon somewhere inside the box. Another, maybe even more typical, but very, very capital mistake, I already mentioned a couple of times, check the label. For example, I have super beacon, 1915, so it means that it's 1915 slash 868 megahertz band, so a high frequency band. Then it has 7 kilohertz. So, I don't know, maybe it's seen, 37 kilohertz. So, and IMU. Okay, I, all super beacons that have IMUs. Uh, now, they talk about the 30, 37 kilohertz. And uh, this we already mentioned. Uh, so, this is my beacon. I choose the beacon, and this is the frequency. If the beacon is 25 kilohertz over there, it must have the ultrasonic frequency only 25. You must not change it. If you change it, it's a very, very bad thing. Because what will happen? You force the beacon on 25 kilohertz, even though its native frequency is 31. Uh, the result will be like this. It will try to emit on 25, and it will partially emit on 25, but poorly, because it's not designed for 25. This tra the transducers are very resonative, and they're resonating on 31 kilohertz. So 25, it will try to emit, but pretty poorly. But since it's resonating, it's like, you know, I kick it, and it st start resonating at 31. So I even so I try to do 25. It will also resonate at 31. As a result, it will kind of resonate on both frequencies: 25 because I'm forcing on 25, and on 31 because it's native frequency and it's kind of producing the tone there. As a result, complete mess. You will have a tracking, but very terrible jumps and all kind of things. So don't do this. Simply don't do this. If you see something really strange, it's either line of sight which is most, 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 most likely uh, non-line-of-sight situation, or you have this very capital mistake. 
check the label, check all the beacons, really all the beacons, and repeat everything from the scratch. Jumps. Now, I already mentioned, jumps is a particular thing because this is what uh, defines uh, good tracking from bad tracking. Uh, now, let me even try to replicate those jumps. I have the beacon, and the beacon is here placed on the white box, and my station beacons are over there. Now, let me try to make it. I don't know whether it will work or not. I will make several mistakes. First of all, I change the height, even though it's 2D, and I will try to hide uh, the mobile beacon from, uh, from one of the station beacons, basically behind their... Now, let's see. Uh, well, it's, it's already kind of behaving pretty strangely, even though uh, now maybe my block is not, not too blocking. So let me... Let, oh, okay, now you see. Now it's happening, because my own body... Uh, I, I don't see either one or both. No, anyway, so you see, th this is happening. So once again, now it sees. Tracking is good. Now let me zoom. Tracking is good, everything is good. Now let me... So you see, it's, it's a perfect tracking because it sees well. Let me once again... Uh, maybe... Now uh, you see, it, it's kind of partially tracking, partially not tracking, uh, but seems that this is not blocking too well. But my own body... You see... Uh, okay. All, all the mess starts when li non line of sight. So this is the biggest, the biggest mistake that people do. So line of sight, line of sight, line of sight. And uh, what is next? Next could be uh, noise. By the way, noise where? Next to the listening beacon. In inverse architecture, the mobile beacon is listening. And in stationary, uh, in the non-inverse architecture, the stationary beacons are listening. Even though you see I'm sh you know, shouting pretty loudly, uh, since or no, you, you can see that uh, it, it's working well, even though I'm very loud and the uh, station beacons are a few meters away. It, it works well, so it's not a problem. Why? Not because I'm not producing the ultrasound. If I, if I were you know, a bat and producing ultrasound, it would disturb. And particularly uh, if I were uh, 19 kilohertz, or okay, 19 kilohertz and 25 kilohertz. Uh, but I will still try to make the noise uh, which would disturb. And the noise which would disturb is a high pitch noise and high frequency noise, which is kind of a wide band noise. Let, let me produce this very bad noise. You see. It's the most terrible situation because I'm producing extremely loud noise. I'm basically shouting you know, directly to the beacon. It still survives, but you can see what's going on. Um, using the oscilloscope. It's pretty simple. So uh, my beacon is 14. I'm choosing... which beacon will listen and which beacon will listen from this. Okay, it's just too, too strong signal. Let me make it less strong, still very, very strong. Okay, now you can see uh, how the beacon the hedgehog sees the stationary beacon number 11. And this is how it will see the stationary beacon number 13. So the signal is weaker because the frequency is different. Oh, 37 kilohertz. It's fine. Uh, but let me now produce the same voice or the noise that I produced before. You see, the level of noise is significantly high. Still, uh, the ultrasound uh, is uh, overshouting because we have sharp filters, etc. But the logic is still the same. It's always about signal to noise ratio. Now the signal is strong, the noise is very strong, but still our filters are very, very sharp. So, uh, but if I go far, like 20, 30 meters away, such a loud noise would uh, probably block the signal. It will be, you know, jumps. So when you see the jumps, it's most, most, most likely jumps due to bad line of sight. It's like 95%. But the remaining, it could be uh, due to external noise next to the listening beacon. In inverse architecture, it's mobile beacon. In non-inverse architecture, it's station beacons. So this is basically why you can choose, this, uh, in non-inverse architecture, 
versus inverse architecture. For example, drones, very noisy. So this is why for drones, non-inverse architecture or multi-frequency non-inverse architecture. The mobile beacon is emitting. And since mobile beacon is emitting, ultrasound is very, very uh, narrow uh, band, very narrow channel. So uh, even very noisy drone, heavy noisy drone, it doesn't matter because the station beacons will be filtering the wide band noise and signal to noise ratio in our channel would be uh, enough, sufficient, so that we would be able to detect their uh, signal produced by the beacon itself. Uh, but if you tried to use inverse architecture for the drone, it wouldn't work because uh, the noise would be just too wide band and too strong uh, for the beacons if they are placed far away. So it meant that you would need to move them closer or maybe even closer, depending on signal to noise ratio, depending on how strong noise is from your drone, how far is the distance. So at some point of time, it will start working again. But this is what not, not what we recommend. So it's much better that you do the non-inverse architecture and simply overshout the noise. Uh, and the software mismatch. I already mentioned the in the beginning, all weird stuff is usually starting that uh, their, their software is not, is not right. Modern software, dead dashboard software, or mobile beacon or station, or some of them is not right. There is a uh, check there, uh, this uh, field. Okay, currently I have beacon 11 discharge, which is bad. Okay, we wanted to shoot the video, but check and monitor this, uh, their uh, information here. Uh, it clearly reports that there is a software mismatch or you try to do non-inverse architecture beacons with inverse architecture beacon, all this kind of messy stuff. So it will, it will uh, highlight here. So just you know, listen to the dashboard and uh, fix the mistake. Uh, okay, something happens. Uh, so do, don't, don't, don't let the mistake uh, confuse. Uh, okay. So what to do? No well, basic stuff. Basic. Return to uh, to the basics, and uh, it means that uh, sorry, your table is this download. Now your starting page is download. This is operating manual, and this is your application node, the placement manual. So this is the operating manual and the placement manual I mentioned several times. Typical configurations how to place the beacons on the top for 3D mobile beacon on this. Simple 2D, what we discussed. Two stationary beacons, one mobile beacon, one modem. The most simple configuration. Then more and more and more and more study. You know, we produce a lot of material, but if you don't study, you can't follow the, the best practice and all the mistakes uh, start from this. So uh, downloads page. Check the operating manual, check the placement manual, and study the help videos. So this video is on YouTube, and uh, there are many other um, videos helping in more details. How to set up, how to change their whatever channels, uh, how to set up multiple so maps with multiple submaps, etc. So many, many, many uh, helping videos with simple tasks, with more complex tasks. Check it. If you completely kind of stuck, uh, so basically repeat, you know, disassemble as I mentioned and follow step-by-step -step guide in the operating manual, upload the software, press the default button, what I already mentioned, press the reset, erase the map if needed and uh, start from the scratch. Uh, reach the same level where you're successful and then very carefully repeat the next step and see what's, what's wrong. Uh, now let's finish with this. I hope that we will, uh, we, we are helping with this video because it, it's nothing new. Everything what I described uh, in this video is already described in the operating manual, in the placement manual, even in many videos. But we wanted to highlight one more time uh, that uh, following these uh, steps is a critical because it uh, differs from the very simple setup to a very complex uh, and time spending configurations. When you do everything right uh, for basic 2D configuration, you can build in three, four minutes. But if you don't do it right, you may spend hours or days trying to understand what's wrong. So hopefully this video helps you to make it in minutes 
rather than in hours or days. Thank you very much.